Hello, everybody. Welcome back. All right. So we have a little interview here, a podcast from Rich Dad, Poor Dad author, Robert Kiyosaki. Um, let's get into it. He put a tweet out. Emergency podcast number one launched. It's smoking. Please pay attention to what Andy Sheckman is saying about Treasury Secretary Yellen is babbling about. All right. So this is pretty informative. Give the video a like, subscribe, comment. It helps uh, get the message out there and beat the YouTube algorithm. All right, so enjoy the video. This is the Crypto Realm. Play hard, trade smart. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki. This is the first emergency podcast or broadcast I have ever done. A quick history <laughs> is that I read a book in 1984 called The Grunge of Giants by Dr. R. Buck, Mr. Fuller. I don't recommend it. <laughs> but what Fuller said was that our wealth is stolen via the banks, via our money supply. And today, our emergency broadcast or podcast is with dear friend Andy Sheckman. He's my source. He's my credibility. He knows what he's talking about. Like me, he studies the whole history of this whole <clears throat> insanity that's going on today in the banking system. So I'll give you a little bit of history. 1971, there was a guy named D.B. Cooper, and he supposedly jumped out of the back of a 727 in 1971. And his alias was D.B. Cooper. Remember those initials, D.B. Cooper, because what it stands for is deception, betrayal, collusion. Deception, betrayal, and collusion. So what's going on today is deception, betrayal, and collusion. There's a book by a friend of mine, Nomi Prince. She wrote the book Collusion. It's about how the central banks of the world, besides they're not really banks, <laughs> They're, not, they're really Marxist, they're central, but they're not really banks of how they collude. And they collude with big companies like BlackRock, you know, Larry Fink. If I was Larry Fink, I'd change my name, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's fitting. But anyway, this is an emergency broadcast, deception, betrayal, collusion. You'll see a video playing of Secretary, of Tre Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. This is collusion. <clears throat> she was also head of the Fed, and now she's head of the Treasury. Any collusion there? And so our economy is crashing at high speed. So this is the first emergency broadcast we're going to do, but this is what our company was set up to do. And so our guest today, or my dear friend here, is Andy Sheckman. <clears throat> and you you sent me this picture of Janet Yellen, which you will see. See? Will the deposits in every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of their size, be fully insured now? Are they fully recovered? Every bank, every community bank in Oklahoma, regardless of the size of the deposit, will they get the same treatment that SVBP just got or Signature Bank just got? A bank only gets that treatment if a majority of the FDIC board, a supermajority, a supermajority of the Fed board and I, in consultation with the president, determine that the failure to protect uninsured depositors would create systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequences. So, what is and your we plan? Make that determination. Right. right. So, so what is your banks. plan to keep large depositors? from moving their funds out of community banks into the big banks. We have seen the mergers of banks over the past decade. I'm concerned you're about to accelerate that by encouraging anyone who has a large deposit in a community bank to say, we're not going to make you whole, but if you go to one of our preferred banks, we will make you whole at that point. Um, look, I mean, we're that's certainly not something that we're encouraging that is happening right now that is happening because depositors are concerned about the bank failures that have happened and whether or not other banks could also um, no it, it, fail. it's happening and because it's, you're fully insured no matter what the amount is if you're in a big bank you're not fully insured if you're in a community bank well you're not fully insured and you you big, were at signature, the, and the it big, was it just barely met that threshold. You were at signature. Well, we felt that there was a serious risk of contagion that could have brought down and triggered runs on many banks. 
um, and that something, given that our judgment is that the banking system overall is safe and sound, um, depositors should have confidence in the system. Uh, what did you What did you hear in her DBC? Deception, betrayal, collusion. What did you What was she saying that terrified you? <clears throat> what she was saying. <clears throat> and first of all, thank you for such a wonderful introduction, and and the feelings are mutual. Sure. I greatly appreciate it. Um, what Janet Yellen was saying. You know, we all we all left Monday thinking that hey. It's okay. The banks are going to be bailed out, and, and it won't be at the taxpayers' uh, expense, which we all knew was a lie. It would be at your dollar's expense or your deposit's expense in the respect that the money had to be created out of thin air, and we just figured that would mean more inflation. And so all of the banks, regardless of their uh, their their poor choices, their gambling, if you will, in, in depositors' assets, and we'll talk about that in a moment, um, that they'd be bailed out and that this would just be an ever increasing uh, party of, of uh, printing and of uh, backstopping the banks. And what she said yesterday was, was truly um, shocking to me. Basically, she was being grilled by a senator, I believe, from Oklahoma. And uh, what he was asking was, so are you telling me then that all of the small regional banks in my state will be uh, backed uh, by the uh, full faith and credit of the Fed so that none of these banks are going, if they fail, they will all be bailed out the way that um, uh, Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, thank you, banked it. And the other one that just failed as well. Sorry, my <laughs> brain is it's kind of like a Nerf ball these days. I've been, the last four days have been unlike anything I've ever take, experienced. Take, take, take one break. Show them the number of emails you just showed me. Yeah, I have, uh, I, well, I have, this is just the very, very beginning of them, but I also have over 700 emails that, uh, that I haven't even gotten back to. I'm trying people. I will get back to you. I'm this whole weekend. All I'm going to do is, is reply, but uh, I think it was, they're, uh, they're, they're terrified, aren't they? They are. And and well, basically what she said was that the, the, the only banks that will be bailed out will be those banks that have the um, approval of the majority of the FDIC board, the majority of the Federal Reserve Board and the her. and her and Janet Yellen herself. Those are the only ones that will be bailed out. In other words, those banks, she said, that in our minds are too big to fail, the systemically too big to fail banks. In essence, what she was saying was that all of those smaller banks are dead on arrival. They won't be bailed out. And if they're not deemed to be systemically important, then they will have no backstopping. And what that is basically doing is hurting everyone into a pen of the four, five, six biggest commercial banks in the world uh, or in the United States, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America, the City, the JP, the Goldman, all of them are going to be too big to fail, systemically too big to fail, interconnected with one another through a massive, massive amount of derivatives, whereby if they fail, they'll bring down the whole system. But the little banks who, um, who run into trouble, and we're gonna talk about why they run into trouble in a moment, but those banks, no, they won't be bailed out and um, too bad. And what that's going to do is collapse the, the, the entire small banking uh, industry, the entire regional bank industry is going to collapse. Who's going to leave their money in these little banks? Uh, if you're running a business, let's just say that the Rich Dad Network kept all their money in a small regional bank near your office, people that you've known and trust, and they've been great to you, and they know you by first name, and they know your staff by first name, and they treat you the way you expect to be treated. Not anymore. Those banks are not too big to fail. And if they go under because of the systemic nature of what is happening, uh, they're not going to be bailed out. And it's important to understand something. So all of these banks over the last several years have accumulated with the deposits that they received since the president was able to remove all of the reserve requirements during the pandemic 
to zero. So most of these banks have virtually nothing in the way of currency on hand. And because they would take these uh, deposits that came in from, from the depositors and they would buy bonds with them, typically treasuries and in many cases mortgage-backed securities, at rates above what what you know they were paying, of course, to the depositors, but uh, in in what was typically considered safe places to be, the problem is all of those bonds have an average maturity uh, or an average yield rather of about two to two and a half percent and long maturities. And so the problem is is that since interest rates have risen closer to five percent. Every one of those bonds in their portfolio have lost 50% or more of their value. Now, the banking regulations say that they don't have to mark those to market until they sell them. And so they have a whole balance sheet filled, up, filled with toxic assets that, that have lost over half their value or more. So in the case of SVC, when you saw a run on the bank, for whatever reason, you get people running on the bank because there's so little cash, uh, the reserve requirements have been slashed to nothing, these banks are forced to sell their bonds at a huge loss in order to meet customer demands to get their money back. And if enough uh, people uh, redeem or withdraw their money and the banks are forced to liquidate their bond holdings, which are all have been eviscerated by rising rates, then, as we saw last week, a large bank can become insolvent in less than 24 hours. And that's exactly what happened. The FDIC can't handle this. Their insurance fund is only 0.03% of bank deposits, 0.03%, roughly $125 billion in FDIC liquidity backing over $9.5 trillion in deposits. And those, so yeah, Matt, those numbers again, the FDIC backs up nine and a half trillion what? Nine and a half trillion dollars worth of, of deposits with about 125 billion in in cash. cash. That's so the, 0.03%. So if just one or two banks fail, that's it. That's gone. So, so again, again, what did again it goes to uh <clears throat> deception, betrayal, collusion. Yes. What did Jen and Yellen say? She says, who's going to decide who lives or dies? It will be her, the, the overwhelming majority of the FDIC board, and members of the Federal Reserve. So they're going to decide which banks uh, are worth saving and which banks aren't. And we all know which banks are they're talking about. These are the commercial banks. These are the banks that we are seeing billions of dollars flow into now over the last several days. People are yanking their deposits out of these smaller banks because they're terrified for exactly this. And when she said this, she admitted the fact that they are going to pick and choose as to which ones they believe are too important to fail and which ones aren't. This is going to herd everyone into these banks. Every one of, uh, of the people who have large accounts at these <clears throat> regional banks are going to pull their money out and they're going to send it over to JP uh, Morgan, to Morgan Stanley, to uh, Citibank, uh, to Goldman Sachs, because they know that those banks will not be allowed to fail. Wait, one, this one is second. ridiculous. Let me, let me. So a small regional bank is on my property. I have a lot of rental and commercial properties, unfortunately. It's a small bank. Yes. And a if a bank, bank like that fails, I can pretty much guarantee you if it's a small regional bank, well, I, sorry, too bad. We thing. bailed out we bailed out those banks, but not you guys. How many employees lose their jobs? A lot. A lot of employees. And and more than that, how many people are going to lose their money? Um, as it should have happened with Silicon Valley Bank. And they've changed the laws in midstream. Now I'm going to deviate just a little bit and talk about something that I guess you could say is, I'm, I'm extrapolating. I don't have evidence to back this, but I want people to think outside the box. So there was a lady who was number two in charge at the Federal Reserve, and now she moved over to uh, the president's uh, White House um, uh, on, and I, and, and I, okay. I'll you, I'll, her name is Lael Brainerd, and I will give you the name of the, um, she now has joined the, uh, has joined the, 
where is it here? She has joined as the top economic advisor and director of the National Economic Council for the Biden administration. She was number two at the Fed. And when uh, President Biden appointed, reappointed Fed Chairman Powell, I thought that they were going to appoint Lael Brainerd. And she ended up being appointed vice chair. And, and the reason I thought that they would not reappoint Powell is because he was a Trump uh, appointee. But they did. They reappointed him. And uh, and Lael Brainerd was number two. Now, Lael Brainerd's whole thesis is removal of the commercial banks and uh, a central bank digital currency. She is a modern monetary theorist. So it, think about this. Now she's left the Fed and is working in the White House. Think about this for a moment. This act is going to herd everyone out of the thousands of small regional banks that provide customer service in the lobby uh, and, and a good experience that, that what banking used to be. Now everyone does it on their iPhone and on their computer. They don't go into the bank as much. There's not as much interpersonal communication and, and relationships. So those banks are gonna go bye-bye because everyone's gonna pull their money out of those banks because they're scared. What if you have a mid-sized company with $10 million in a regional bank and you're afraid that if we see more systemic problems, which we will as rates continue to rise, putting more pressure on these horrible bond portfolios and they start to fail. Everyone is gonna yank that money out as fast as they can and send it to the big commercial banks. Now, you're gonna have everyone penned into a handful of very small banks or very large banks, a small selection of them. What happens if indeed uh, this is the type of plan that they are trying to do, where they herd everyone into a handful of these banks, and then we see a Bear Stearns or a Lehman Brothers moment, where one of them is allowed to fail. Wells Fargo, maybe, or or Morgan Stanley, or, or Citibank. Just one of them fails, creating panic. Everyone panics. That money is now vaporized like that. Uh, FDIC doesn't have enough to, to back it, so what happens then? In comes the central bank digital currency on, on a white horse. We're here to save the day. And this shows why we need to get rid of the commercial banking system. Now, again, this is hyperbole. This is, is I'm just extrapolating her thesis where her whole idea was to get rid of the commercial banks and enact monetary policy directly to the, to the citizen or the consumer on their iPhone directly from the central bank. So. All I can simply say to you is this, the banks are in trouble. We're going to increase the tremendous amount of inflation that's already into the system. We're going to increase it to bail out those banks that are systemically too big to fail. And they've already told us it won't be via taxpayer uh, injections or bailouts. They've told us that FDIC only has 0.03% backing, so that won't work. So they'll print money to bail those banks out but everyone's gonna flood into the commercial banks. And then they are ripe for whatever they have in mind. If they let one of them fail, just one, everyone will panic and embrace the new CBDC currency, which we have been told by the Bank of International Settlements that everyone must have, all countries that are part of that network, the, uh, the, the BIS network has to have an operational CBDC by 2025. Who knows? Maybe we'll have one much sooner than that, the way that this is all um, going. But this is very frightening. That's that's what um, my friend Jim Breckers was talking about. Executive order by Biden, 14067, was passed a year ago. So they expect the central bank digital currency, the Fed coin, this year. And right. when they go to Fed coin, there goes your privacy. They can track you like a dog via your money. Is that Absolutely. your concern? Absolutely. Not only, not only will they be able to track you, the, the biggest reason the Fed wants a Fed coin is different from why the, the government and the IRS would want a Fed coin. The government and the IRS can track everything you do. And if they don't like what you're doing, they can penalize you uh, by locking your money down or saying you can't use it to buy this or you've bought too much of that already. And they can program it. That's a frightening thought. The, the Federal Reserve wants it because the way that money is created in this country, <laughs> excuse me, is by it being lent into an exi into existence. Without getting too deep here, the, the commercial banks have the, the US treasury bonds. They buy them from the treasury. They have them on their balance sheet. And if the Fed comes to them and says, I want your bonds, 
they're obliged to sell them. So as an example, a commercial bank will sell their bonds back to the Federal Reserve and they get cash. Now that cash, they have two things they can do with it. The first is to lend it into existence. So the Fed pushes buttons, creates money, and gives the, the banks the money to buy the bonds. Now, if, the, if those banks want to lend it into existence, like on a credit card paying 18% or a home equity loan paying 8 or 9% or a mortgage or a car payment, then they do that. And now that's how money is created. That money that in the form of a loan is freshly created money into the system. This is how they stimulate the economy. If the banks don't want to do it, and this is what you and I were talking about the other day, they will pile that money into the reverse repo market, which is overnight lending. They give it back to the Fed, earning 4% with safety instead of lending it out into the system. As I mentioned to you, it is an indictment of the economy because they don't, well, they would rather give it to the Fed at 4% and not lend it out than to give it to someone on a credit card payment earning four and a half times that at 18% because they don't trust the economy. And so when the, when the commercial banks are not lending and in fact are giving it back to the Fed in, 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 the, in the reserve accounts and in the reverse repo market, that actually is not what the Federal Reserve wants when they want to stimulate and create inflation. So their agenda from the Federal Reserve is to be able to enact monetary policy without having to it to be lent into existence as in the entire history of this country by the banking system. They want to be able to give you money or take you money to create inflation or deflation if things get too hot or not hot enough. The, the, the IRS and the government has a different agenda. It is coming. We were told that every country will have one by 2025. You know, the 13 or 14 banks, as per President Biden's um, executive order have been working on it along with MasterCard and maybe another credit card company where they have been mirroring the system. All the deposits and 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 uh, deposits and outgoing money has been mirrored on a system that hasn't been turned on yet to see that it's working and it's coming. So look. So, so let, me, let me give you a break on this. So get out of your thoughts. The reason is called deception, betrayal, collusion. D.B. Cooper, 1971. The collusion is Yellen, Janet Yellen, the Secretary of Treasury, Treasury Secretary, used to be a head of the Fed. And today she's head of the Treasury. And the collusion is they give that money back and forth to each other, and you and I get nothing. I'll give you one more plug because Miles Franklin is Andy's company, and you can buy these things. This is real money. This is a little buffalo, you know, I have thousands of these. The reason I have silver and I have gold, not stored here, not, not that stupid, but if I don't want to be traced, let's say two years from now, you know, I want to go to my hairdresser, I don't have to use the uh, Fed coin. I can use this. So this yeah. will still be money. And it's legal tender. And some states are now making it. You can pay your taxes in it and all this stuff. Absolutely. So there's a really going on that Andy's and, talking about. And that is a big deal. There are states waking up to using it as legal tenders. I just want to read you one thing as we talk about Lil Brainerd. For the past eight years, Lil Brainerd has been using those economic antennas in her job as a senior official at the Federal Reserve. But next week, she will carry it over to the White House after Joe Biden tapped her to be his top economic advisor and director of the National Economic Council. So same thing. She was at the Fed. Now she's in the White House. And this is a person whose entire agenda was modern monetary theory and money paid directly from the Federal Reserve and the abolishment of the commercial banks. But step number one is to get everyone out of the small regional, regional banks out of Ow. fear, herd it into the big commercial banks, and we are seeing a massive consolidation. And that's exactly what is happening because they are going to pick and choose who they backstop and who they don't. And this is, you can't even make this up. This is um, this is something that is so crazy that I think it's going to have rippling effects <clears throat> throughout the entire banking industry. And you will see bank runs and a lot of them. And I think they will start in those small regional banks like the one that is in your commercial property. Yep. So anyway, this is the first emergency broadcast. I think you'll understand why. Sarah knows this is why the Rich Dad Company was founded a long time ago. Rich Dad Poor Dad is still number one in the world. And we're still saying things like savers are losers. 
your house is not an asset. And the biggest bank of all today is BlackRock, and they're as woke as they come. You know, they're as greeny. They, they're canceling oil projects all across the world because they want, when they cancel an oil project, inflation goes up because the price of oil goes up. And so inflation is now systemic. You will pay more and more next year and the year after. And when that guy, Powell, who is the, uh, he's a, what is he, Fed chairman today. Yes, yes. He says inflation is transitory. He was lying through his teeth. And when Biden said that this won't cost the taxpayers any money, what do you think inflation is? Exactly inflation right. is a tax. So that's why Andy Schechman is head of Miles Franklin. Again, show him that list of people who are kind of getting the message finally. Well, this is just the very beginning of it. Uh, there are 700 more emails that I have to print out just to uh, to keep up. And, and look, I want to just say one last thing. I know we want to keep this short. <clears throat> Let me tell you what the difference is right now. During Silver Squeeze in 2021, we worked 18 hours a day for, for a week or longer, uh, dealing with people who I will argue were more interested or being more motivated by greed. And, and I say that because greed and fear are the two motivators. And they wanted to make money capitalizing on AMC and GameStop. And, and they were calling in droves to, we're going to squeeze the silver market. We're going to squeeze the commercial banks who are short silver. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's vastly different. What we are seeing now are people motivated by tremendous concern and fear. And, and the, it, it's, it is oozing from these people. Um, and I think for the very first time in my career, not only are all the people I'm talking to afraid and concerned, I am. I emptied my own personal bank out of U.S. Bank the other day on Sunday before they came out and rewrote the rules because I'm very, very, very concerned about where this is leading. And um, I think it's just the beginning, Robert. I truly believe it's just the beginning. And you're right. They have lost all cred credibility. First, they told us there was no inflation. And then inflation is transitory. Then they'll stop inflation. And then inflation peaked. And then it reared its head again. And the time to be scared is when they tell us, don't worry, we've got all this covered. That's the time to be scared. And I think that people need to really reassess where their funds are right now. And I hate to incite anyone to pull money out of a small regional bank and create these runs on the bank. But you got to wonder, when, when Treasury Secretary Yellen says, we will choose only to stop the banks or backstop the banks that are systemically important, the rest will let fail. This is a problem waiting to happen, especially as inflation goes higher. And the byproduct of that is rising interest rates, which further, further uh, deteriorates the balance sheet of all of these banks that are loaded up on, on toxic treasuries and toxic mortgage-backed securities. Thank you. Another thing that's happening also is uh, taxes are dropping. They can't collect enough taxes. So this yeah. is a, so I, and when Andy was, when Andy texted me, says, this is the worst thing he's ever heard. I had to listen to Janet Yellen and I didn't understand it. So that's why we do this first Rich Dad emergency broadcast. You guys can pay attention. Listen to what Janet Yellen says. Make up your own mind. Don't believe a word Andy and I are saying, but we're just, we don't make any money by spreading fear. But we do want you to be careful, make up your own mind. And what's that old song? Don't worry, be happy. I don't mm -hmm. I don't think this is that time for that. So Andy, thank you for very I hate to say this, it's a first emergency broadcast, but this is why the Rich Dead Company was founded, because we could see this coming for a long way off. Well, God so bless you. you for doing that. You've helped a lot of people. Everyone I talk to sings the praises of what you've done for them. So I appreciate this. It's great to see you again, and I look forward to seeing you in uh, in April, April sixth, April sixth, seventh, and eighth. We'll be there, and is going to be speaking at the Rich Dad Conference, April sixth, seventh, eighth, in Scottsdale. But you better hurry because I think all the tickets are gone. Anyway, well, that's that's another problem to have. But anyway, this is an exciting time if you're prepared for it. Please, everybody, take care. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Sarah. God bless. Bye. Hello, fellow adventurers. Are you tired of lugging around those big, heavy, and noisy generators on your camping trips? Well, you're in luck. The Blue Eddy generator is here to make your life easier and your camping experience more enjoyable. Let me tell you, these generators are game changers. They're ultra-portable and lightweight, making them perfect for taking on the go. 
and don't be fooled by their small size. These little guys pack a powerful punch. You can power up your devices, lights, and even small appliances like blenders or coffee makers, all with ease. But here's the best part. The Blue Eddy generators are super quiet. That's right, no more noisy interruptions to your peaceful camping experience. You can power up your gadgets without disturbing the peace and quiet of the great outdoors. And the utility of these generators doesn't stop there. They're also great for emergency backup power during power outages or natural disasters. Keep your lights on and your devices charged no matter what life throws your way. So why settle for those clunky, noisy, and heavy generators when you can have a portable and powerful solution that makes your camping life easy? In our pinned comments, you will find a link to Blue Eddy. Check them out today.